Good morning, everyone. This is Ryan Droletti, field ag economist in East Central Iowa with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach. Today, talking about pasture, rangeland, and forage insurance. First of all, let's talk about insurance. The purpose of insurance is not to make you money. It's not an investment. It is used to manage risk. In the U.S., there's over 580 million acres of pasture and rangeland. There's over 60 million acres of hay ground. It takes a very unique policy to cover risk for livestock feeding operations, whether it's in pasture or rangeland. How it works, it goes off of a rainfall index. They use the NOAA, or the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration grid data. It has historical data going back to 1948. This insurance product provides protection against low protection low precipitation events. A rainfall index is set to 100, 100 being a normal rainfall event for the year. It covers hayland and grazing land, whether you're haying, using the land for hay or grazing cattle out on it or any type of livestock. Rainfall grids. This is a grid pulled up on East Central Iowa around, around Maquoketa, Iowa and Jackson County. A grid is 0.25 degrees latitude and longitude, which is roughly 17 miles north to south and 12 miles east to west. A link that you can go and look up different grids for your area can be found there at the bottom. Just like other crop insurance products offered by the RMA with the USDA, this one is subsidized as well, depending on your coverage level. You can see that if you have a coverage level of 70%, the premium subsidy or the premium is subsidized by 59%. Likewise, if you have an insurance level, coverage level of 90%, you will receive a 51% premium subsidy toward or a subset 51% subsidy toward your premium. You can also pick your productivity factor. You can pick anywhere between 60 and 150. 100 meaning that you're pretty average for that um, grid that you're in. If you look at it and go, you know, I usually produce um, lower forage values or, or lower uh, hay values than everywhere else in the grid, you might pick somewhere closer to 60. If you say I've got a fantastic piece of ground, maybe you're going to pick maybe 150 instead of that 100 level. Now, the dollar amount of protection per acre is based upon the county base value, the coverage value that you, per that you picked, and also the protection factor that you uh, picked as well. For the 2016 calendar year in the state of Iowa, all of the counties had a $52 grazing value and a $357 haying value for that county base value. Taking those numbers that you picked as far as coverage level and protection factor, timesing those all together with your base value gives you the dollar amount of protection for the acreage that you're going to protect with this insurance. When picking your insurance, you have to pick at least two different periods of a two-month period. That might be a little confusing, but you have to pick every period is at least covered by two months. Over Every period is a two-month period. You have to pick at least two periods. Within those periods, each period has to be covered at least by a minimum of 10% and a maximum of 60%. So if I only have two periods covered throughout the year of a two-month period, I can cover each of those periods by 50%. I have to have a total of 100%. Or I can do a maximum of 60 on one and 40 on the other. If I have multiple periods throughout the year, the least or the minimum value to pick is 10%. I can't go below that 10% value. Indemnity payments are paid when the actual rainfall index is below the insured index level. So if I insured at 70%, at the 70% value, and the index that year for the month that I have insured goes below 70%, I will trigger an indemnity payment. The amount that I would get paid is based upon the dollar amount of protection that we factored earlier, the insured index, and the actual index divided by that insured index again. There are some online tools, decision tools that you can use 
to look at past years and how past years would have paid out at different insurance levels for different grids. You can also go on and look at different grids in your area and what grid you need to pick. The support tool looks like this. When you look at the support tool, you're going to pick whether you're grazing or whether you're, whether you're haying, your coverage level, what product, productivity factor you're going to pick, and then what is your interest in the insurable acres? Do you own 100% of those acres or do you own or crop share 50-50? How many acres are then and are you going to insure? And then you can look at that bottom one as sample years. So you can look back historically and say, okay, if I was in, if I was looking at 2015 for Jackson County, the grid number 26558, I can look at and put in my values over here of what periods I'm going to insure, if I had a, um, what my premium would have been, and if I would have triggered an indemnity payment in that 2015 crop year. And you can look historically back at the different years at maybe 2012 that was a drought year, 2015 was a fairly good year. Looking at this insurance tool and saying, what should I insure for this coming year or do I need to insure it all? Some of the dates to remember, you need to, to um, the close of sale for this insurance product is typically November the 15th which is also the date that you will report your acreage, which also is the day that you can cancel the policy. Premiums aren't billed until um, September the following year. This has been Ryan Droletti with Iowa State University Extension. Thank you for listening, and have a wonderful day.